This is the most hyped up Chromebook Plus model of the year, and after using this loan unit for the last month since my unboxing video, I can see why. As usual though, not everything is perfect, and there are some things to be aware of that we'll cover off in this video. From having this Lenovo Chromebook Plus 14 in your hands, you can tell it's a well-built device with the aluminium lid and rounded corners. The new design language from Lenovo with the larger logo in the center of the lid has also grown on me. At 14 inches, it's the perfect size for most and the weight is really decent too. Perhaps that's one reason to actually consider the lower spec non-touchscreen model as it's just 1.17 kg, that's about 2.58 pounds. Or if you go for the touch display like I have here, you're going up to 1.26 kg, that's about 2.78 pounds. So many of us have wanted a fanless Chromebook that can also deliver on the performance front, and the MediaTek Companio Ultra 910 inside this Lenovo hasn't disappointed. I've not had to think about performance or trying to take it easy on this Chromebook. The MediaTek Companio Ultra 910 does a great job, whether it's browsing or Android gaming, and whilst its AI marketing credentials don't overly interest me, the reality of the responsiveness it's given, coupled with the 16 gig of RAM I have in this model, has been outstanding. I've used usually had up to three users logged in with a ridiculous amount of tabs, and I've never felt any slowdown. The Google Play Store also feels so much more instant on this Chromebook too, and apps seem quick to respond. It's felt more like using Android apps on a responsive phone than on a Chromebook, and perhaps for that reason I've been using apps more often than I usually would. I've also set up the Linux terminal and installed apps like LibreOffice, and again both the setup and responsiveness of the apps has been great, so I feel there's a lot more to get out of this Chromebook plus with little to no compromise. The only glitch I've encountered as I shared with you guys here on YouTube and X threads and blue sky was the odd horizontal scrolling of the display every now and again, ending up with the display being stuck with this overlay at the bottom. If I had to restart every time to clear it I'd have been a bit more annoyed but even closing the lid to sleep and reopening seemed to sort it out. Hopefully between MediaTek and Google it's something that can be fixed soon enough. All of that performance is delivered via a physical Chromebook that keeps to high standards too. The backlit keyboard is a pleasure to type on with relatively short key travel, and having the newer Chromebook keyboard with the quick insert key and the G-branded launcher on the bottom row also just adds to everything feeling up to date. And although it's not actually glass, the glass-like touchpad again has been great for taps, gestures and clicks. The optional fingerprint reader is really a welcome addition on this model spec. It makes the device feel extra premium, but it's also got that really practical use, saving every time I'm unlocking the Chromebook or accessing autofill data. The OLED display also over delivers compared to other Chromebooks. The fact it's OLED with great contrast, it's really bright too at up to 400 nits, and colours look great to me thanks to it covering 100% of the Digital Cinema Initiative P3 colour space. The optional touchscreen has been there when I've needed it too. For me that's not an essential, so having any tech where I feel like it's even slightly over spec'd on what I need feels like I've just future proofed myself that little bit. Again there's no corners cut when it comes to the webcam either, it's quad HD and quality looks great, of course you've got the extra controls for video and audio due to it being Chromebook Plus. The only thing I'd ask is let's get a better control for the manual privacy slider. That still feels a bit awkward and cheapy to me. The speakers are yet again another area where I feel Lenovo went the extra mile. These are the first being certified for Dolby Atmos on a Chromebook, and whether it's that or just the fact that it is a quad speaker setup, it's really helped and they definitely sound better to me than most other Chromebooks even with upward firing speakers. Here's a quick sample from the intro track from this video. I found battery life decent and I've got no complaints, but I certainly haven't been getting near the claimed 17 hours from the Google Power Load test for this one. I'm probably getting closer to 8 hours. It's probably as I've had multiple users logged in at once and the screen at a decent brightness level most of the time. I can see with one user logged in and managing the screen brightness how you could definitely get more out of it. Whilst the Lenovo is relatively light on ports, it really wasn't an issue for me. Two USB-C ports on either side is really one of my biggest wants, and that was delivered. Plus the one USB-A port and the headphone port, and I'm fairly happy. Keep in mind that Lenovo state only the right-hand side USB-C port can output 4K at 60Hz, and although it's not something I've been able to test myself, I know some of you have experienced issues here, which is certainly something you'll want to be aware of if you're thinking of driving dual 4K monitors. On top of all the great 
great hardware, you're of course getting the Chromebook Plus software benefits to back it up. There were the two exclusives Google launched with this Chromebook 2. The image editing in the gallery app, which has been useful from time to time, allowing you to do more via AI than you usually would when editing on a Chromebook. And I've quite enjoyed that. However, the smart organizing of items I was working on into desks didn't bother me too much. It's more down to how you currently organize things, I guess. But when in a more hectic moment, I can see it certainly could help. Regardless, no one is buying this Chromebook for those exclusives, but it just goes to show you how important this Chromebook Plus is to Lenovo and Google. Those features do look like they're watering down to other Chromebook Plus models, at least we can see in the publicity video for the new Acer Chromebook Plus Spin 514 that also uses the Campagna Ultra 910 processor. They're certainly going to feature there. So the big question is, if you're looking to buy one of these, can you? The higher spec model like I have here with the touch display, extra RAM, extra storage and faster UFS, and the fingerprint reader looks like the obvious choice, especially for roughly £100 or $100 more as we've seen today. The main issue though seems to be finding stock. In the UK, I've continued to share stock updates on Xthreads, Blue Sky, and here on YouTube. As I put this video together, Lenovo have stock of the lower spec model option in the UK, as do John Lewis and also Curry's. But both Lenovo and Curry's are out of stock of the higher spec option that they've previously stocked. The higher spec can be found at Argos currently, although for a rather high price, and also at Costco, but not everyone's got access there. The price in general has also jumped from the discounted price we saw during part of August. Hopefully with Black Friday and other sales periods approaching, we might see another discount. So Lenovo and Google have definitely got a lot of things right here, and if the supply chain can be sorted too, I'll be pleased to know more of you can get your hands on one. Let me know in the comments if you're going to go for it. And if you want to check out my unboxing and initial impressions video of this Chromebook Plus, that video is on the left of your screen to watch next. Otherwise, if you fancy another Chromebook or Chrome video from the channel, how about the one on the right of your screen now?